Okay, so we've been looking at these lines and their relationships. I am going to assume, I'm talking all about angles and stuff formed by the lines. I'm going to assume that you guys know how to read a protractor. Is that correct? Is there anybody here that doesn't know how to read a protractor and needs to brush up on it? Okay, if you do, what's that? Now, no, no, protractor just goes down to the degree. There's no minutes or seconds on the protractor. Um, if you get to those problems and you need help, let me know and I'll help you with them. It's, what do you have an angle that you have to measure the angle of a protractor? Partly I don't want to go over it because I don't have any spare protractors in the room, so it's kind of tough to do. But you guys you guys still get one in your drafting kit, don't you? No, we got an angle for Okay, gotcha. So anyway, we've been talking about these angle relationships. And there's a lot of, of important relationships we have. One of the things we need to look at, though, today before we go in, any further is naming an angle. When we go to name an angle, let's look at one like this. There's a lot of different ways I could name this angle. I could call it just angle N. Calling it that, in this case, wouldn't be bad because there's no, the point N has only two angles formed off of it. It has this one and, of course, that one. In most cases, we're looking at the one that's less than 180 degrees, so the smaller angle formed. Another way we could name this angle would be angle MNP or angle PNM. The order we put the letters in doesn't matter except for one of them. The vertex, in this case the N again, has to be in the middle. The M and the P are just any random point off of each side of the angle. So I have to have one point from each side. A third way of naming the angle, I could just do this. Put a little label in here that says angle 1. And there's my angle 1. So let's say I wanted to specify, because right, as I said, there's two different angle ends here. There's the the smaller one on the inside and the bigger one on the outside. So I could specify angle 1 and angle 2 to differentiate those two angles. Otherwise, like I said, if I just named angle N, I'm looking for the smaller one. And we talked briefly about, about this. If this angle here is 52 degrees, What's angle one going to be? 128. How'd you get that? Perfect. 52 from 180. What's this one going to be? 52. Good. Because those are vertical angles, they have to be the same. How would I find angle 1 there? Okay, so I'm going to subtract from 180 my 38 degree, 52 minute angle. To make this work, I have to fill in 0 minutes on the 180. It's 180 degrees, 0 minutes, technically. So then I'm going to have to borrow from the 180 Make this 179. This is going to be 60. This is now 8 minutes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. That would round up to a minute. Yep. If you got 60 seconds, that's to go up to a minute. Yeah, at 59 point, if you're rounding off to the nearest second, at 59.5. Well, straight 60, yeah, that should be, should round up to another minute. Okay, so the thing come off straight minutes, and I, I thought it was weird when it came off straight. Yeah, something's, it's getting rounded off to 60 somehow, and yeah. So, let's look at this one. And that goes through there. Let 
what's angle, we'll call this angle four here. What's angle four gonna be? Okay, so it's gonna be 90 minus 68, 14, 38, which is gonna come out to be 21 degrees, 45 minutes, 22 seconds. Of course, if we're doing it, you gotta put in the zero minutes, zero seconds, Borrow from the 90, this is going to be 89. This becomes 60. Borrow from the 60, this is 59, and this is 60. And you can subtract from there. When we have parallel lines, and we cut across it with a transversal like this, there, if you were in a high school geometry course, there's all sorts of rules we would learn, like um, interior angles, exterior angles, alternate interior angles, all that corresponding angles, all that wonderful stuff. All sorts of different names for pairs of angles. And some of them are equal, some of them are supplementary. Let's take a look at this quick, just to, to get a feel. Let's say that this here is 71 degrees. From that, can I figure out this angle here? What is it? 109. Where'd you get that? Yeah, 180 minus 71. Because those added up to a straight line. What's this one have to be? 71. This one? 109. Just because of the supplementary angles, adding up to a straight line around that, that point there. But when we come down here, these lines are parallel. This line slides up on top of there. This angle and on. and this angle right here fall on top of each other. So this angle must also be 71 degrees. Once that one's 71 degrees, this is 71, 109, and 109. So instead of going through all those rules for trying for uh, angles and uh, parallel lines and all the names like alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding angles, corresponding interior angles, instead of going through all that vocabulary, we're going to use what I call Hoff's rule. Feel free to pass this on to your children. Um, <laughs> we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. All angles are either equal or supplemented. Sure. Hoff's rule is you pay enough, you pass the class. Right? Just Ross. Just Ross. <laughs> oh no, they made a lot of money off of that. Let's see here. Let's call this 51 degrees. Call this 48 degrees. I want to know that angle right there. How do I find it? A lot of times on these problems, it's easier to look at what you know and figure out what you can find from that than it is to look at what you're trying to find. That's about right. Uh, yeah, that's about right. So the way I would approach this is I've got the 51. I know this has to be 51. I know this has to be 51. Makes this 51. This one then would have to be 129, 129, and that's it. Down here, however, the 51 and the 49 add up to 99 total. That's 99 from there to there. Which means this has to be 81 to finish off the, the supplementary, the linear grouping there. If that's 81, then angle 1 is 81 degrees. Kind of a chain reaction on those. 
Look confused, Andrew. You okay? Okay, perfect. So we have an angle here that's 117 degrees. If I create another angle whose sides are parallel to the sides of this angle, does it have to be equal to this one? I'm going to create another angle. Like this green line is parallel to this side. This line is parallel to this side. Does this angle here have to be equal to that one? Yes, it does. If I were to extend those out like this, of course, this angle and this angle have to be equal, and then this angle and that angle have to be equal because they're parallel. Does any angle I create by doing that have to be equal to the original one? Not necessarily. Because I can do this. I can draw this side that's parallel to this one. I can draw this side that's parallel to that one. This angle created is not 117. But it is related. It will be how much? 63. Very good. If I had continued it this way, this would have had to have been 117. So this one's got to be a supplement. So if I have an angle and I create sides that are parallel to those existing sides, the new angle either has to be equal or supplementary. Bless you. Let's do the same kind of thing again. Bless you again. Let's have a known angle here. We'll call this 58 degrees. This time I'm going to create sides that are perpendicular to it. There and there. Let's create this angle. Is that angle equal to the 58? Say no. How is it related to the 58? If I would have done, kept this going here, this would have been 58 degrees. This has to be 122. Supplement. That 180 degree benchmark, because it, first of all, it applies to you know the angles that add up to a straight line. It also applies to the angle sum of a triangle. 180 degrees, and when you're dealing with angles, comes up all the time. It's going to be one of our, our starting points that we compare angles to. So it's just a huge tool. And most of the time, when you're doing related pieces like this, now we saw one line that's perpendicular, or line perpendicular to each side. You're going to create angles that are either equal, like the 58 was, or supplementary, the difference of 180 degrees. <clears throat> I know that was a short lecture, but big homework coming with it. On page 470, it's exercise 20-6. On page 472 through 473, it's exercise 20-7. Page 476 through 477. Exercise 21-3. And on page 482 through 484. Exercise 21-4. Just do the odds on each of those. Should be good to go. Tomorrow we have a quiz, a little bit of new material, we'll send you home for spring break.